Hello. In this video, we're going to walk through how to activate an Outpost server. At this point, you should already have your Outpost unboxed and either racked into a four post rack or maybe sitting on top of a flat surface. If it's in a rack or on the flat surface, you need to have the power connected, you need to have the Nitro security key installed, and you need to have the, the QSFP plus connectors connected up so the single the single connector on into the front of the server and then you'll have two connections one for service link and one for local link plugged in to your to your switch assuming all that's done the next step is to now activate it so let's walk through first verifying that the physical connectivity is up so i i've serialed in to the outpost server so i've connected my laptop to uh the connection on the USB connection on the front and I'm using a Windows laptop but you can use a Windows laptop you can use a Mac you can also use an Android device and install the Outpost installer app from the Play Store and connect that Android device up to the Outpost server in this video we're walk we're doing the walkthrough connecting using a Windows laptop so I'm using putty I've done my serial connection over uh, in my in my case it's com5 your yours may differ uh, and then using a, a, a bot of of one, uh, 115 200 so now that I'm in you can run describe links to verify that you're physically connected and the outpost server sees that you're physically connected for both the service link and the local link here you can see both the service link is in an operational state of up along with the local link. They're both up. That's a good sign. If for some reason this, these are not both showing up, you'll need to check your physical connections for your QSFP plus cable. Now that we know the physical links are up, we want to see did we get IP connectivity or do we have an IP address for the service link? So you can run a, a describe IP command and this will return uh, what address, if any, the service link has. Here you can see it's configured. I have an IP, I have a network mask, I have a gateway, and I have a DNS server. DNS is really important here. Uh, just uh, you have to be able to resolve your endpoint uh, in the region before you can move on and, and do anything else. If for some reason there's something that's incorrect inside your DHCP uh, scope, such as maybe the DNS server is wrong or the gateway is wrong, you will have to change that and then reboot, essentially unplugging the outpost server and plugging it back in to then pull the, the new DHCP information. The next thing we want to do is make sure that we have reachability back to the region that you ordered the outpost from. To do this, we first have to tell the outpost server which region we should be connecting to. So we do this by doing an export AWS underscore default region that needs to be all caps equals and then whatever region your outpost was ordered from or is home to in my case it's US East 1 you'll get a result of OK and now let's check to make sure that we have reachability um, or at least uh, to make sure we can resolve first uh, we'll do a resolve and then we'll check the reachability so if you do a describe resolve this tells you DNS is responding and it's resolving. Those are both true. You can see uh, I'm trying to hit the outpost at US East one uh, Amazon AWS .com, and that returns three different IPs for that for that name. So name re resolution is good. Now now we want to check can we actually reach that endpoint? And you can do this by doing a describe reachability. So this will tell you that you're able to hit the you have TCP connectivity over to the outpost endpoint so yes reachable is true which is good you can see your source IP you can see the destination IP and it is going over 443 when we go to actually do the activation process what's gonna happen is we're gonna reach out to this endpoint over TCP 443 and then we're going to start building the service link and that happens over UDP 443 so just because you can reach our endpoint here just know that that is over TCP but we also still need UDP 443 to be open 
in order to build out the service link and activate the outpost. Before we can actually do the activation, we need a set of, of temporary credentials that authorizes the server or that can authorize the server to be activated. The one thing we don't want is, you know, let's say the, the server got shipped to the address you specified, but it never made it to you, and somebody else is, you know, plugging it in and somehow knows how to do all these commands. They still won't be able to do anything with it unless they have credentials to activate it from the account in which it was ordered from. So to do that, we're going to go over to IAM. We're already in logged into our account that the outpost was ordered from. We're in uh, Identity and Access Management, or IAM. We're going to go to Users. And then we're going to add a new user. This this user uh, can be dedicated just to provisioning your outposts. Uh, if you only have one or two outposts, you can delete the user when you're done. Uh, if you are ordering more on an ongoing basis, you may want to keep the account around uh, because the credentials we're going to use will be temporary and not necessarily this user's credentials. So let's just call this outpost. We want to attach a policy. You can type outpost here in the search and uh, to filter. And we're going to want to select the AWS Outpost Authorized Server Policy permission. This is the permission that gives access to, to activate the outpost. And if you see, if you go down a little bit below, you can see I have this start connection and get connection. Those are the only two things this permission is allowed to do. And in effect, the credentials that you give to somebody, it could be a third party installer, that these credentials that you give to them will only be able to do this, these two actions. Click next and then click create user. So now in order to generate temporary credentials from this user, we need to first get the, uh, the access key for the user we just created. So we click on the user we just created, outpost, go to security credentials, and then go and create an access key. Well, we're going to do the command line interface. So you understand, click next. You can set a tag here. I'm not going to use it. Now we have our access key and secret access key. And this is what we're going to use to generate the temporary credentials. So we'll go over to the CLI, um, AWS CLI installed the latest, the latest version, preferably. And once you're in there, you're going to want to uh, either create a default profile or a named profile. We're going to create a named profile for AWS CLI since we already have a default one. Um, and the name profile just allows you to, to specify uh, a, basically a different user for running AWS CLI commands. So if you already have a default user that has a bunch of permissions to do other things, we're going to use, we're going to configure a new profile using AWS configure and the profile parameter. And this lets us specify a different set of credentials. So we're going to call this profile outpost. It's going to ask me for my access key ID, in this case here. And then the secret access key, which will copy the region, US East 1, it's already selected. Uh, default output format, JSON, sure. Now we're ready to generate the temporary credentials, and we'll do that with uh, AWS STS get session token. The only parameter you have to specify here, um, or you'll want to specify, is the duration seconds. And this, this tells uh, STS how long should these credentials be good for. Um, this could You could set it for 24 hours, 5 hours. Depend, if your installer is just waiting for this, you could just set it to an hour maybe. Um, if the credentials expire and you haven't activated your server yet, that's OK. You can go ahead and create a new set of temporary credentials. So I'm just going to do 900 seconds. And please make sure if you are if you did specify a named profile, like I did, in order to generate these these credentials that you actually specify it when running the get session token. Because if you don't, you're going to get a different session token from your default profile, which likely won't match your outpost account, and therefore your activation is going to fail. 
So I'm specifying the outpost profile, and now I get this access key ID, a secret access, and a session token. We'll need these three things um, in order to activate the outpost. I'm just going to copy them over to Notepad here so I have them. The access key and secret access key are pretty easy to do. It's the session token that uh, is very long and you got to be careful to make sure you get just the right amount of characters don't include the quotation marks or the comma at the end okay so we have all this in notepad we're going to start with the access key so we'll copy that and now from your serial connection to the outpost you're going to do another export so in this case export AWS access key ID equals and then the value. You should get an OK returned. Um, it did find an invalid character. Let's see what we did here. Ah, let's just do it once more. Export AWS access key ID. Make sure it's all capitals uh, for the for the key that you're setting. Copy that once more just to make sure. Okay, so you can see the result is okay. That mean, means it's formatted properly. If you do mess something up, we do have some uh, some amount of, of format checking to make sure that you're not doing something that you shouldn't or not inputting something. Next is the secret access key. So you're going to export AWS underscore secret access key equals and then paste in your secret access key make sure your result is okay and now we need to do the session token the session token is very long uh, we do see folks accidentally paste this in twice uh, don't worry we'll tell you that uh, there's something wrong with it if you accidentally paste it in twice but this is export AWS session token equals you, here you'll see why people might paste it in twice because it conti it's continuously scrolling because the session key is so long. Wait for that to finish. Once it's done, hit enter. You should see a result of OK. And now there's just two things left to do. You're going to run a start connection. And here you should get an output of is started true. And then the message should be setting up service links. This will take some time. The documentation says you know you should wait five minutes before you do a get connection to make sure everything uh, has has started properly. You don't always need to wait five minutes. In our case, we'll wait a few minutes. And I guess while we're waiting, one thing you know I've we talked about a lot of commands here. If you ever need assistance or if you forget them, you can look in our documentation or you can type help, and typing help will uh, tell you all the commands available uh, and everything that we just went through. Let's go ahead and try get connection and see what it comes back with. You can run this as many times as you want. Okay, so you can see here keys exchange true, connection established true. These are both good signs. Uh, this means that the, the your outpost server is in fact now being remotely provisioned by AWS. Some other good notes of information here. The primary status is success. Um, that's key. And then you can see your primary peers, you can see your secondary peers and their endpoints. But the key things here, keys exchange, connection established, and the primary status. If those are true, true and success, there's nothing more for you to do except wait. Uh, it can take up to eight to 10 hours for the activation to happen. Sometimes it takes less. But today, at the time of the making of this video, eight to 10 hours is a reasonable amount of time to expect. You can come back in here uh, at any point and run get connection. You can also check the status of your outpost if you're back in the console. Let's go back there and go to the outpost service page. So here if you click on the outpost that you were provisioning, once it's done, the status will change to active. If it still shows provisioning, that means we're not quite done yet. But active means you, you can then start to create subnets on your outpost and launch instances on your outpost. That's going to do it for this video. We have another video in case you're interested if you want to learn what to do after this. So this would be creating a subnet on your outpost, 
setting some parameters on the outpost subnet that you've created, launching your instance, and making and establishing the LNI or the local network interface onto your ECU instance. Thank you for watching.